Welcome back, Stasa23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And uh, before I get started, I'd like to say uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Hope everybody had uh, a phenomenal 2018, and I hope there's a lot of awesome in y'all future for 2019. I know it's going to be a great year for me, just I'm speaking into existence now. And uh, for all you newcomers that have just joined the ho hobby, uh, it's it's definitely an awesome time. It's either a blessing or a curse. You have so many awesome new companies, so many awesome new designs. Just it's it's awesome, awesome time right now to be. It, it's either awesome or it's draining your bank account or both. <laughs> so let's get into it. This is my best knives of 2018 that came out in 2018. It's ones that I own personally, or I may I'm gonna talk about a few that I don't own but I have handled. So let's get started. <clears throat> the first one. And these, these, this first set of knives are going to be my $100 and over. So that's the criteria in this one. So the first one just made that cut, and it is the Ace Giant Mouse Iona. It's a Vox Anzo design, the company that they cre created. This one has more of the Vox, I mean, more of the Anzo uh, uh, design cues. As you can see, the Anzo pattern on these FRN scales. You have M390 blade steel. Just a, a nice... You know, uh, I wouldn't call it a budget because $100 isn't a budget folder. But, you know, if you wanted something in the Spyderco Delica <coughs> range, but, you know, their VG10 just didn't cut it for you, you have M390 in this guy. And I own both <coughs> this guy and a Delica. And this guy has kicked the Delica out of my pocket here in the last few weeks. So there you go. That's number one. Uh, next one is by We Knives, <coughs> and that is the Rectifier. This was a pretty uh, exciting offering that that I was, you know, pretty pumped up to see when they released this guy because a lot of We's um, knives were, you know, three and a half inch blades or pushing close to that four inch marker, and <coughs> this one. Well, I don't know if it was their first, but it was their first dive into that sub three inch marker and their upper tier knives. And you got a sub three inch blade and you got a very nice uh, shallow hollow grind. So nice and thin behind the edge. This thing's an amazing cutter. Nice ergos. I, I think these came in around 115, maybe. I'm not, I'm not certain, but I know they were, you know, well under their super high end. You got uh, G10 <coughs> S35VN steel and titanium frame lock on this side. So really, really cool, cool knife, especially if you're in the, that sub three inch <coughs> knife, into sub three inch knives like myself, a titanium backspacer. I did uh, do the anode on this, but it came with, um, uh, I don't know what it came, I think just plain titanium on this side, but really cool design, cool knife. <clears throat> all righty let's see the next one is the mass drop collaboration with ferrum forge produced by we knives and that is the buck uh this one I when i first saw it on mass drop i wasn't too sure about it because i'm not a real big fan of cleavers um uh, because i've owned some cleavers in the past and i just didn't keep them so i didn't pull the trigger when they first released this guy my good buddy sean I accidentally bought two of them and he sent this one uh, to me to review and he said if I liked it we could work out a trade and as soon as I got this guy I, I loved it so we worked out a trade and it's been in the pocket quite a bit it's got that you know unique cleaver cleaver shaped blade with that nice top swedge and unlike most cleavers it's not super wide in the pocket I mean, uh, most of them are really wide because you got, you know, usually wide handles. You got a slim handle on this guy and, you know, not overly crazy. Super comfortable in hand. That choke up is just uh, yummy. Nice slicing capabilities. You got that nice point for piercing. Titanium frame lock, titanium backspacer, titanium pocket clip. There's your Farron Forge logo. And this is a, a good way if you're a Farron Forge uh, fan and you can't, <clears throat> you can't uh, afford their customs like myself. This is a good way to get one of their designs without paying custom prices. And I'll tell you, 
the mass drop collaborations <clears throat> that they're doing with these custom makers that are being produced by we to me are some of the best bang on the buck some of the best bangs for your buck on the market at like completely i mean they this guy i want to say was like 120 or so and that is amazing you get s35 vn steel titanium frame lock this one i think came with just raw titanium that was stone washed i did the anno on this it did come with this blue backspace and blue pocket clip but just oh they're they're killing it they're they're it's like somebody said they're gonna be ruling the world here soon <laughs> so there you go i wish they would do away with that mass drop logo but hey i'm okay with it so there you go <clears throat> the next one is la, 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 a best tech knife uh, I saw this guy at Blade Show 2018, and when I saw the prototype, I, I was like, take my money now. That is the Best Tech engine. This is another in my sweet spot, sub three inch knife. Uh, it kind of has the ergonomics, kind of like a Spyderco Dragonfly, where you pretty much have to choke up to get your full four finger grip. You can choke back like this, but you're pretty far away from that cutting edge, and it's just not as comfortable as this, like, like this right here. Uh, kind of also reminds me of the CRKT Pilar and on this side they have their special anno they call it spectrum anno I think or something like that pretty pretty neat not really my thing but I want to check it out got your titanium mill pocket clip works good <clears throat> I like these little windows they have it's like windows into the blade as you can see you can see the blade sticking out right here the choil area just cool and then they also did something I hadn't really seen before. You got the titanium backspacer, but it, it instead of being hooked to the uh, carbon fiber to where you got post right here, it bleeds over into the uh, show side scale, and you have that beautiful uh, carbon fiber void free right there. You got a really nice action on this guy. S35 VN steel. I think this guy is on sale, I think, for like 130 right now. Somewhere around there. Correct me if I'm wrong. There you go. Has the best tech engine. Huh. All right, next one's by Zero Tolerance. It is the 0609. And I was pretty excited to, when this one came out. It, it took me a while to pull the trigger because I was kind of hung up on that uh, proprietary pivot, being that they didn't have the tool out. But the tool is now out for sale. And once that tool came out, I felt good about picking it up, picked up the tool, so I'm good with it. And one reason why I was kind of excited <clears throat> when this guy showed up is because ZT is known for their overbuilt, hard-use, tactical-style knives. <clears throat> and this one kind of broke away from that, kind of like the uh, Senkovich 0450 did. But the 0450 just didn't fit my hands and ergonomically back in this area. It gave me a pretty bad hot spot. And it was pretty thick behind the edge. <clears throat> and this one, you nice and slim in this area right here even you know pretty slim in this area and <clears throat> you got you know nice contour titanium scales i added that mxg gear deep carry clip it didn't have to it's just something that i like um and you do have that pivotless pivot right there this is also an rj martin design 20 z 20 cv blade steel really good steel um and that blade shape just mm, so birdie decently thin i mean it's not it's not the thinnest behind the edge but compared to the 25 i mean the the 28 30 thousands behind the edge that a lot of their models before were i think this one come in at like 23 thousands behind the edge if i'm not mistaken and you know that's that's good that's good for my adc task uh also super comfortable in hand very very smooth riding on their kvt ball bearings and Mine drops free with just a little bitty shake. Very, very nice. Nice snappy action, just as you would expect with their KVT bearings. I think this one comes in at around $220. Definitely not cheap, but a lot of work goes into this, especially when you got the 3D contoured uh, scales and you have this milling pattern right here. Then you're also sharing royalties with the maker that you're collaborating with. So there you go, that's, that's my next one. <clears throat> Uh, the next one has just been a super hot knife for Benchmade, and for good reason. That is the Bug Out. Um, 
this this knife has thoroughly impressed me, especially being that I'm not a huge axis lock fan. Uh, especially being that um, you know they just my hands are destroyed, so it's not the most comfortable thing. And I'm not even sure. I'm not sure. My memory is also terrible. I'm not sure if this model came out this year or last year, but I know the new, the gray and green one, I just, you know, had to throw it in there. So forgive me if my memory has uh, lost lost me and this one's not for 2018, but hey, it is in my mind. You got that S30V steel blade. Uh, definitely good to go. I think $115 price tag. Um, it's another thing, bitch made used to i mean i don't know a lot of my bench maids are decently thick behind the edge around twenty eight thousandths or so this guy is i think twenty four thousandths which you know once again perfect for my edc task it comes with the frn scales but uh the guy I traded this traded for for this uh put these rogue blade works um g10 scales on there just gives it a little bit more rigidity Def definitely doesn't need it especially you know for its intended purpose. Nice and slim, super, super lightweight, especially with the FRN scales. It's an excellent knife, all around excellent, excellent knife. There you go, very comfortable in hand. You have that full, full size blade, full size handle with a very light, lightweight package. Alrighty, let's see. Uh, la, 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 la. This next guy, um, was sent to me. I bought the, the got the original version of this and it was in VG10 and I liked it a lot. I wasn't super stoked on VG10, the VG10 it had, but he, he re-released it this year in an upgraded LMAX steel and that is the Quiet Carry IQ. And I must say that this knife has been surprising me over and over and over again. I already love the fact that it's very slim, sleek, lightweight, uh, decent, decent uh, thickness behind the edge. You know, it's it's a pretty pretty good slicer. You got nice and nice and slim blade stock. Let's see, compare it to the uh, bug out. Bug out's got some pretty decent thin stock, so it's it's thinner than the bug out. Um, and this thing virtually has no footprint in the pocket. <clears throat> I've been putting quite a bit of use on this just to test out the LMAX, test out the Ergos. I posted a video up on my Instagram today. I was doing some uh, wood shaving, wood carving, and this thing performed just way above what I thought it would. Uh, some nice thin curls. Go check it out if you want to see. I'll, I'll try to put some of that, some of my testing footage in the video of this. I'm working on that for the 2019. I'm going to start figuring out some editing techniques. But uh, very snappy action. One thing I've noticed about every quiet carry that I've ever owned is they're all super smooth. All have great action. And their quality keeps improving. Their signature, these dots right here. Uh, I don't know what this one costs just because it was sent in for review. But uh, I'll try to put it down in the description box. Just a really, really cool knife. The only knock I've really found on it so far is the pocket clip, being that it's such a sharp pocket clip. It has quite a bit of retention on it, but that's easily fixed. You know, you could easily relieve some of that uh, tension off the pocket clip. But other than that, it's been a, a champ for me. Absolutely love it. That is the Quiet Carry IQ. Uh, the next one, you can hear me say I love it a lot because these are my favorite knives or the best knives of 2018. This one, I haven't had as much time as the rest of these blades to actually do the testing, but I'm working on it. And uh, I've, I've loved it since I've opened the box just because there's a lot, lot I love about it in the design aspects and the maker. And that is another Mass Drop collaboration with uh, Michael Gavick. All right, people know him as Gavco. This is his Thresher model. And uh, I mean, anybody who's been following my channel knows I love clip point blades, and this is a double clip point here. I absolutely love that. And in my, my first impressions, I said that that, that uh, thumb stud looked kind of out of place. And it may, but it was done intentionally. It's supposed to look like the shark's eye, so get a pass on that. Other than that, you know, very well done, uh, 
uh, Gafco it prides himself on getting some nice lean grinds to have some really good performers. You know, he, he it's a tool and he wants it to be able to perform to the best of its ability. So you get S35 being steel. I measured mine at 18 thousandths behind the edge with a 15 degree bevel. And look at that. Nice and skinny bevel. Very, very nice. Look at that. You can see right here where that sharpening troll is, how thin it gets. Just a, a overall great package. I think this one <clears throat> with this milling on here, I think it came in at 180 bucks. I mean, that's hard to beat. You get titanium scales, plus you get matching hardware. So you got titanium hardware that's matched, which you don't usually see them actually match, and they, they do a good job of it. You get that satin finish. I, I don't love the satin finish, but that was the option that I had with this. I would have liked to see a dark stone wash on there or something. I'll probably do an acid wash on it just to give it that rugged look. Uh, all this chamfering up here. Get this, you know, dragon spine looking titanium uh, backspacer. Mill titanium pocket clip. And once again, all this matches in, in you know, they did such a good job in the action on this guy. Woo! Super, super smooth. Look at that. Very, very drop shutty. I did take this guy apart and give it a cleaning. It, it didn't drop as free before. It had a little grit and grime in there from the factory, but I just did a quick clean up on it, put my lube of choice in it, and now this thing is just, uh. And for lefties, action is just as good for a lefty. Might be a little better because you don't have to worry about uh, having your finger on that lock bar. I'm pretty much ambidextrous when it comes to uh, my knives, you know, especially being in the hobby for going on, you know, 20 plus years, you know, you're bound to get a cut on this hand, need to use the left hand. You can't be without a knife, you know? So there you go. That is the Mass Drop Gaff Co. Thresher, also produced by We Knives. All righty, let's see. The next one, this one, I'm just throwing it in there because I love the knife and I think it was a great knife, but it, it's it's going to be one that's kind of tough to find because he only did a few runs of it. But definitely a cool knife. It's Elijah Isham Black Star. I jumped on this guy immediately from the blade shape alone. Uh, and, and that's probably why, you know, 50% of why it's still in my collection. This is a slip joint, but it's a, a detent. Uh, slip joint means it's being held in by a detent open and closed so you got a detent in the closed position there's a detent hole up here and it's got a front flipper right there nice little action on there but the only the only problem with this is is see you don't have any guard right there and, and all you do all you have to do is overcome that detent which is not that hard so this is just one that I usually keep in my my, my coin pocket you know if I need to pull out a knife in front of the sheeple this isn't going to scare them. And you just got to be, you know, mindful of what you're cutting. You got to make sure you're, you're doing downstrokes and you don't have it to where it could get caught up. Like I, I was cutting up cardboard the other day and I cut through it and I thought I went all the way through it and the blade got caught into the bottom of the cardboard and pulled it down. But luckily it just, it just stopped right there. If I would have been doing something crazy, it probably would have slipped my finger pretty good. Uh, this thing is also riding on bowler m390 this guy wasn't cheap at all especially for the size let me get you a little size comparison this guy was 150 bucks so it's pretty steep for what you're getting but <clears throat> you know it teach their own so if you know what the engine it's about the same size as the engine let's see and i have a spider code delica right here as well so as you can see the the delica completely dwarfs it but it's one of those knives that you either love it or hate it or, you know, whatever. For me, it's that blade shape. I'm a sucker for that blade shape. It gets me every time. Alrighty. The next one is another <clears throat> somewhat, you know, exclusive. I don't know. It, it, the maker made a, a few batches, and I tried to ask him when he would, if he was going to have any more, and he didn't really have a, a positive answer from me, so... I'm just showing it just because it's one that I loved in 2018, and that is the Berg's Blade Mini Iron Pup. Once again, you got that oh-so-sexy clip point. I mean, there's a, there's some kind of theme going on here. 
I love, love, love my clip points. I don't know. I think I love my clip points, huh? Yep, yep. Drop points, clip points. I love them all. But uh, one one thing about this this mini iron pup, it, it's got so many qualities that make it look like a custom. I'm so excited because I have the Slim, whatever, I think it's just the Slim EDC. Uh, supposed to be coming in tomorrow. Oh, that I can't wait. Um, this one's a beauty too. Carbon fiber, titanium bolsters, S35 being steel with like an acid wash on the blade. There's his logo right there. Sexy knife. If you want to see my full video on this, check it out. I have a video on the channel. I think every one of these I have a video up on them. I should. If not, they'll be coming up soon, but I'm pretty certain I do. The next one is uh, another collaboration uh, knife. Uh, it was a grail of mine, and, and we're going with that clip point theme. It is the, the, the Pina X series Laney's Clip Point. And this is produced by Riot Knives, and this is one that's... You're just going to have to love the Lannies. You're going to have to love Pena. You're going to have to love Riot. Because this one's definitely not cheap. It's the most expensive one. You know, I, it's definitely not going to be for everybody. And I, as much as I love it, as much as this is a grail to me, it may not stay in my collection. Because if a knife doesn't get carried and used often, you know, within at least two months. Because, you know, I have a lot of knives to rotate. If it doesn't get any love in two months, especially at this price tag, it's got to go. So, as much as it even pains me to even say that, I don't know if this guy's going to stay in the collection. It just doesn't get carried as much because of the heft and, I don't know. It has that, that sexy recurve S35 VN steel. I love that top swedge. Beautiful, beautiful. It would have been really awesome to see it without the recurve, but I think this design it still looks sexy. Then you have that that faux you got that faux jigged bone look into the titanium. You got that faux bolster right here. A lot of work went into that. Look at that. Very, very nice. You got the titanium hardware that's anodized blue. You have the uh the stone washed uh main grind and swedge and then your flats and your uh your front tip are uh, belt satin there. You have a nice blood groove on both sides. Very, very comfortable. That's one thing I like about the Landy's design. It's the way that that handle is just very simple. No crazy uh, choils. The only choil you have is for the flipper tab. Just locks you in. There is no jimping up there because you don't really need it. You have a pretty wide, you have thick blade stock with that flat right there to rest your thumb on. And that guard from the flipper tab that locks you in. Anybody who's ever held or handled or owned a Riot knows their qualities very, very uh, good. And nice snappy action. Just what you expect for a Riot. There you go. So, you know, I may see this up for sale on one of my sales. We'll see. We'll see what 2019 brings. All right. And the last one didn't really come out in 2018 it the 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 original design came out a long time ago but they they did a, a re-release of it with a batch this year and that is the socom elite and uh, like i said they re-released it this year so we'll call it new for 2018 at least this batch is new <laughs> uh, this is to me a very underrated knife especially if you like your four inch blades and uh, tactical style knives, this thing, I'm not into overbuilt tactical style knives, but this thing checks so many other boxes. The way they, the precision grind on this thing where they ground it down so thin, I think it, it measures at 18,000 behind the edge at 15 degrees per side. Look at that, look how skinny that, that bevel is. At 15 degrees per side, that is amazing how stout that tip is but you can still get a good penetration right there you have m390 blade steel with that sexy stone wash I, I prefer their apocalyptic finish but that stone wash is sexy nonetheless and you have that bank fault lock up here you have that in that hard anodized aluminum that is super tough 
just well well done, well put together. I know a lot of people get turned off by this, this tip down pie clip, but but man, don't let that stop you from getting this knife if you like this design. It, I'm not, you know, I could care less if it's tip down or tip up, as long as it works and as long as it's comfortable in the hand. And it definitely works. No hot spots from that clip whatsoever. And the way it sits in my pocket, you know, when I'm pulling it out, it's already in the right position. So this thing is super, super smooth. And look at that. Ooh, you, hear, you hear the lock up on this? Listen to that. It's got that thwack. And for being on a bear, bearing pivot, I've never had a bearing knife like this that has, when I say absolutely, absolutely no side to side. I can't even muscle. I can muscle pretty much side to side out of all the other folders I've shown. I can, I can muscle it out of this guy. This thing is solid, so solid. I literally, I can take, take the pressure off of there and I cannot muscle any side to side. This thing is stout. Very, very stout. No up and down. I mean, whew, just a nice knife. Be a great deployment knife for somebody like going going overseas or something like that. This would be awesome. And if you needed an even more robust, uh, harder tactical, you could get their Tanto, which is even more beefier than that guy right there. So there you go. That's my top knives of 2018, and we're gonna we're gonna pull some back in here. And I'm gonna sh I'm gonna pick my my favorite knife of 2018. At least that's in my collection. Before I do that, I'm going to give two honorable mentions just because I don't own them. Uh, but I've handled recently the Spyderco Capara. If I owned it, it would definitely be in this. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. What an awesome folder. Can't wait to get my hands on one of those. Uh, as soon as I can recover from Christmas, I will definitely, definitely be purchasing one of those. And I guess Santa Claus said I was on the naughty list. <laughs> I didn't get one, and I asked him for that for Christmas. Um, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, but out of out of these, these are the ones that you know. If I'm choosing out of my top, oh, and one more. You know, this is my favorite ZT at the moment, but one that you know could definitely give it a run for money after handling that blade. But I haven't had time to actually use it, or I don't own it currently. Is the new uh, Sinkovich design that looks like the Atmos? I can't remember the numbers. Can't remember all those numbers. But that's another definite win, no doubt. So definitely hope I can pick that up and review it in 2019. But here, here's the here's my top choices that I'm going to choose from, <clears throat> and. This is a very tough, you know, you, you can't lose out of any of these. You know, this has been my most carried as of late. Um, this guy just doesn't get carried as much. Uh, I think mainly because it's pretty thick behind the edge. It's not a good slicer, at least in my experience. Just not that great of a slicer. So this one's got to gotta go for the top knife. Um, as much as I love this guy... And it's a great overall knife. Oh, I don't know. Hold on. I don't know. This guy's a tough one. Uh, this one. Eh, man, this is tough. You know, if, if I would have had more time on it, this guy would be my number one pick. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But I, I, it's still too new for me to be able to say that. Excellent, excellent knife. But it can't be my favorite knife. I'm sorry. Just because it just doesn't have as much use on it to know for sure. Whew, this is very tough. I'm gonna have to eliminate this guy for lack of use. I uh, just started the testing, the actual use testing on it. Excellent knife, but still too early to tell on that one. It's out of these two, boy, 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 that's a tough one. Two American companies, two awesome knives. And it's basically just going to have to be something stupid to eliminate one of these because I, I love both of them. They're both great knives. Awesome action. Awesome design. Awesome action. Just two different beasts. I'm going to have to say the ZT0609 for me. And it's mainly because I'm just not a huge... Um, not a huge Axis Lock fan. I'm sorry, all you Axis Lock 
fans out there. Only reason, it's just, for me, it's just, for my injuries, it's just not that comfortable for me. Excellent, excellent knife, and I know this should be, you know, somebody, and I hope this is a 2018 release, because <laughs> I feel stupid if not, but hey, it is for me. So, ZTO 609 is my top choice for this year. Y'all let me know what y'all would have chosen out of all the knives I've shown. Or tell me what your type top knife is. I, I would definitely like to hear it. Love having discussions down in the comment section. And it's getting late for me. So, like I said, hope everybody had an absolute wonderful 2018 and an even better 2019. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.